things got derailed for me and I kind of quit and gave up on whether it's, you know, some kind of life pursuit, uh, relationship, marriage, family, parenting, relationship with parents, uh, health, career, finances, or more importantly, our faith. Uh, things just kind of maybe aspects of our faith like reading the Bible, praying, witnessing ministry. Something got derailed and I gave up on it and moved past it and kind of took it as that that was my only option. Uh, how do I get back on the track? How do I get back into a place where I'm moving forward? I'm going to discuss that in this video and this video is a summary of the, the message that was delivered in our service on Sunday, June the 9th, 2024. Uh, this is a summary of that. If you want the entire message, I'm just going to summarize the ideas. Uh, in that message, I'll quote the verses and, and read the passages and those kind of things. But here I'm just giving a summary of the principles. So I encourage you to check out that video if you want the fuller version of it. So this is a walkthrough from uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, pulling some principles from it. And you might, in first reading, not really grasp that that's what's taking place. I referenced some other verses to, to kind of shape this for us in the message. But there are certain things that God calls us to, and he obviously calls us to godly living. He calls us to, to the mission of reaching people, making disciples. Uh, he calls us to... to to ha pursue a healthy marriage if, we're, if we are married, uh, to, to do parenting well, to have a good relationship with our parents, uh, to be stable in different ways. These are things that God calls us to, to do. Even in the stability, God calls us to pursue having financial independence and being financially stable. There's some level of physical well-being, especially when it's missionally focused, emotional well-being, and, and of course, our spiritual maturity. These are things that God calls us to, but if I were to look at my life and see that I'm not, I'm not landing in, the, in those spaces, I'm not making progress in those spaces, and maybe I've, I've kind of given up on those things. And one of the dynamics we have to recognize that we often don't see when it comes to faith is faith isn't just simply, it is this, but it's not simply believing in Jesus believing that he can, it's believing that he will, it's, it's believing all of those things and believing that he has called me to do certain things, he will empower me to do it, and I'm going to pursue it, believing that there's going to be certain outcomes in the pursuit of these things. And, and when, we, when we lose that aspect of that faith, often things get derailed and we, we give up on that pursuit and as a result of that not only are things that are more earthly jeopardized but our our faith and our ability to impact the faith of others is jeopardized by our pursuit of progress being derailed so how do we how do we gain this better more stable life and how do we have a greater impact on others we do that by asking three questions the first question is, why and on what do I want to give up? So why do I want to give up? Typically, when we're giving up, it's because things are going poorly. We're not getting to where we want to be. We're not making progress. Maybe we're moving backwards, or at least we're just at a standstill, or things are difficult and challenging, and we quit. We have to recognize that that, that is usually the scenario, and so part of it is accepting that hey, there are going to be challenges, it is going to be difficult at times, and I need to embrace that reality and, and do some things with that. And so I need to ask why. Why is this really, you know, that I'm giving up on this? It's because it got hard. And then what is it that I have given up on? Typically what happens is, when our, in our faith journey, is we give up on doing things God's way. Our faith got derailed because we didn't see the progress. It got hard. We stopped. But what did we stop? We often stop doing what God has called us to do. And so we have to face that reality and realize why we're giving up and what we're giving up on. And hopefully that will sober us uh, to, to decide that so, I need to do something. That, that's not a good place to be in. So then that leads to the second question I need to ask, and how do I change my mind? 
how do I, because I don't want to do this now, because <laughs> I went through that difficulty and I, I struggle and I, I don't want this anymore. So how do I change my mind to decide that I do want this? Uh, there's various ways to do that. One is to review the evidence of God's faithfulness, because often when we quit, it's because we're, we're very focused on what's going wrong. And we tend to think that everything's going wrong and there's nothing going right and there's no progress at all. So I need to begin to look for where is the progress? Where are the good things? What, where, where am I moving in the right direction? Where am I seeing fruit from this? And begin to pay attention and remind myself of these things to kind of break up that tendency to want to give up because I'm looking at the negative. And then I under, need to understand God's methods. I need to understand like, what is it he, that he's doing? What are his goals? Because if I know that, then I can see, okay, I can see why this might be restrained because of that, or this isn't working out yet because of those dynamics. Uh, one of those dynamics is that he is faithful to those who are on the path. He is faithful to his followers. If we are straying from the path, there are certain things that are no longer guaranteed to us because many of his promises have to do with us being believers, being followers of the way. And so I need to look at that and ask, things aren't going well, am I actually on the path? Because maybe that's, that's part of this. God's not blessing what I'm doing because I'm not on the path. Uh, secondly, he can change circumstances immediately with no resources. And so if I'm evaluating based on, uh, there's this huge wall to climb and there's no indication that I'm moving forward and it's very, very uphill and I don't have any of the resources to make this happen. Our conclusion often is, I don't know why I should move forward because I, I don't have the resources and this is too steep of a climb. I have to remember that God has the ability to step in and immediately resolve big mountain issues. Uh, that's why Jesus said we would move mountains. And also can call, speak into being that he's spoken to being the entire material world by a, by a word. I know he progressed it in six days, but he just instantly spoke things into existence out of nothing. So this is the God I'm serving. So when I have nothing, that's not a reason to give up. Thirdly, he often takes his time from a human perspective. To him, it doesn't seem like that long, but to us, it seems like forever. Uh, 80 years is, is not that long to him. And so we have to remember when things are slow going that this is the way God works. Many times he takes his time. Uh, then fourthly, he prioritizes salvation opportunity. Not just salvation, but salvation opportunity. If my struggle is going to result in some individual having the, the opportunity to accept Christ and be with him for all eternity, he would rather me struggle and fail and lack progress than to risk that person not getting in, into heaven. And so I need to, when, when I'm spinning my wheels, I need to realize that some of these factors are here and they may be at play in this circumstance. And so if I'm asking that question, that's gonna help me uh, get back on the track. Okay, so I'm gonna change my attitude now, but now how do I move forward? How do I, how, how do I start to do things? Because sometimes we make ourselves feel better, but then we don't act. And then again, that's a part of the faith issue is we believe God, but we don't act on that faith, and then we don't experience the things that he wants us to experience. So we have to move forward. Uh, there's four items that we, five actually, that we utilize to move forward. First is to do his will no matter what. So if it's not going well in my marriage, I, I need to be a good spouse anyway. If, I, if it's not going well in my parent-child relationship, I need to be a good parent or child anyway. Uh, if, if things aren't going well in ministry, I need to serve and minister and reach out anyway. If I'm struggling in sin still, I still need to pursue holiness anyway. So no matter what, keep pursuing God's will. And then be honest with the Bible. So don't try to make the Bible justify where we are. Be honest with what is the Bible actually saying and, and commanding me to do. Then don't demand earthly solutions in exchange for faithfulness. So don't say, I'm, I'm only going to be faithful if you make something happen in my lifetime. God doesn't, again, God doesn't work that way. Sometimes it happens in our lifetime, sometimes it does not. But I still need to be faithful, and that's part of how I will stay on that train. Uh, then don't assume, balance that out with, don't assume that earthly solutions aren't possible. Many times earthly solutions happen 
And, and many times we don't pursue them because we're focused on the eternity and where God actually wants to give us some earthly blessings. So, so just because it's getting difficult, don't assume that it's not possible. And so, so keep moving, moving forward. And then lastly, seek stability and growth. When things start going awry is when people start to panic, they get anxious, they get angry, uh, they get frustrated, sad, depressed, and they, they start doing things that they shouldn't do uh, as a response to that. Instead, I need to focus on stability. What does, it, what does it look like to be a follower of Christ? Let me stay on that path and let me keep growing in my faith. And in the end, that might not result in achieving some specific target that I have, but I will end up living a fruitful life. I will inherit numerous blessings from the Lord in my earthly life. Maybe they're not the ones I was looking for, but I will inherit numerous blessings in my earthly life. And it doesn't mean I won't struggle and suffer, but I'll have many blessings God will give me in this life, and I certainly will receive a rich reward in the life to come. So uh, if you have any questions on that, just leave them in the comments, or if you found this video useful, helpful, let me know that in the comments as well, or share this, like it, share it with somebody else, and uh, help us to, to get more, more of this content to other people. If you live in the Pittsburgh area and you would like to join us in person, uh, then our service, uh, we're at Bethel Assembly of God, 2501 State Street, Wednesdays at 6.30 and Sundays at 10 a.m. God bless.